The Vision High School Sports Beat, brought to you by the 11 locally owned Vision Automotive Group dealerships, offering Buick GMC, Dodge Chrysler, Jeep Ram, Hyundai, Kia, and Nissan, and the resale division. With locations in Webster, Henrietta, Penfield, Fairport, Canandaigua, Ontario, and Palmyra, and online at visionauto.com. Hello everyone, this is the Vision High School Sports Beat, and I'm Bill Pucko. Every week at this time we take a comprehensive look at sports in Section 5 in Monroe County and begin with our honor roll of high school teams. And number three this week, Pittsburgh football. After a season opening loss to Canisius in Section 6, the Panthers rattle off six straight wins against Section 5 foes. Number two, Spencerport Girls Soccer capped another undefeated regular season with big wins of Webster Schrader 4-0 and defending class AA champion Victor 2-1. Their number one, McQuay Boys Soccer, undefeated and untied 16-0. The Knights had five different goal scorers in a 6-0 win over Aquinas. Adriano Margiata had three assists. Rattle off a list of the top high school football programs in Section 5, and you probably won't think Wilson. But the football pride of the Rochester City School District is in the mix again. City schools haven't fared well in sectionals lately. The most recent football champion was Marshall 11 years ago in 2006. East High won titles back to back in 2004 and 5. The last few years though, Wilson has been the place to be if you're a city high school football player. When you grow up and you pick a team, it's normal for a kid to, you know, not going to pick usually a team that's losing. You want to pick a winner. So if I'm a kid that's coming up and that's what we're trying to preach to these kids, they're building it for the future. We want kids in the city to want to pick Wilson. When they're leaving middle school or even when they're in elementary school and they're thinking about playing high school football, we want them to think about putting on that black helmet and, and playing for Wilson. Greg Mortier has coached football at Wilson for 17 years. The Wildcats have been a sectional finalist but have never won the Class A crown. The past three seasons, they were eliminated in the first quarter final round in competitive contests. This year, Wilson ran off to a 6-0 start, which included a victory over three-time defending Class B champion, Batavia. Uh, yeah, for us to be 6-0 uh, at this point in the season is pretty exciting. We, we've never been... Um, to this level of success in the regular season. So it's brand new for me, it's brand new for the kids, but it is exciting. Now when I say that though, we do have a JV program that was undefeated last year. So those kids are, are coming up with, with, you know, success is kind of the norm. So that, that does make a difference as we move forward. How important is football in your life? Very important, very, very important. Without football, I don't know, or I don't know what I would be actually. So I feel, I'm actually grateful to be playing. Are you using it though as like a, a means to an end, like a, as to have a destination of accomplishing something as a result of your playing football? Yes sir, I want to go as far as I can go, as far as I can go, make it to the lead, hopefully keep up with my academics, my grades, and just go to the best of my ability, keep playing. Jamal McCullough is Wilson's most impressive interior presence. James Cotton is a four-year starter and the quarterback, but Cotton suffered a concussion in the win over Batavia and won't play again. So the Wildcats will be shorthanded as they try to do what hasn't been done in a decade by a city team. It's tough. I mean, it's tough. We have, I, I think, I think the combination of schools has made it difficult. We've got kids that are going all over the place. I think it makes it hard. But uh, if, as I look around, I mean, our numbers have been good. I know, um, I know when, you, when you look at all the other programs, I mean, it's hard to sustain year in and year out. With, with I, I think the way the, the district is set up in terms of the combination schools has made it difficult, but you just got to keep fighting through it. And I think the coaches that we have really try and do a really good job, but it, it definitely is not easy. I mean, I think coaches, if they came in from, from the county to, to see what we got to do on a day-to-day -day basis, they, you know, they, it's a little bit different. Ricky Gamble has matured into a fine football player, quite possibly Wilson's best, and became a team leader. It wasn't always that way. 
Coach says that he's uh, he's always hammering, you know, discipline in your everyday life as part of the program here. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that's taking hold with you? Yes, discipline. That makes us. Yeah, that's. I think that's that's the thing that's making us good. He getting down on us when we doing things wrong. He don't just let it slide. What is the message when he when he gets into that? What is his message? Just be mature. Stop playing around. Like fighting, they put, people play play fight a lot. Just be mature. Do you feel it's helped you? Yeah. I, since last year, last year. I was horrible. I had attitude, anger management. I used to talk back to the coaches, and I had a long talk with them. I overturned all of that. I'm, I'm good now. Does that make you kind of a little more proud of yourself yeah. as a result? Yeah, because then I could talk back on people and tell them, like, I used to be just like you. Just listen and just do what you got to do, do the right thing. Character building. It's the cornerstone of a successful program, and it's a little more important here. For us, it's just the constant reminders about how to act, what to do, what not to do, and when you're doing something wrong, you know, how to fix it. And, and I, think, I, I think with that discipline and character issue, I, I, like I say, I think that they might get annoyed with it when it's happening, but when it's done, I mean, we have a pretty strong graduation rate for kids that finish our program. I mean, we're well into the 90 percentile of kids that if they finish football with us and they stick with it, we can get kids through. Just because you have, you know, you think about your normal day, now you have seven or eight coaches that are that are mentors for these kids that are constantly talking to them and reminding them about things and you know and it doesn't end when football ends because you know that's kind of the way we, we set up that family type atmosphere is you know we're going to look out for the kids McQuaid beat Wilson 10 to 8 to deny the Wildcats a perfect regular season. They'll go win as the number two seed in Class A, second only to Aronicoid. Coming up next, George Giordano with a football tournament preview and the Dunkin' Donuts High School Notebook. Kim Burnson has our Wegmans making the grade segment and unspoiled by soccer success at HFL. When the Vision High School Sports Beat continues. One by one, the donuts came. They brought their fiercest party game. But under the moon, they met their doom far too soon. Get your spooky donuts or 10 munchkins for $1.99 at Dunkin'. Welcome back to the Vision High School Sports Beat. It is time now for our Dunkin' Donuts High School Notebook, and we're pleased to be joined by an old friend, George Giordano. George, you were a guest our first year of the, the Vision High School Sports Beat, some seven years ago. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, what we've took gone you so back long a long time. It? I don't know. We've been busy over to Rondequit High School. <laughs> All right, uh, football program assistant there, so we'll admit your bias up front. Let's talk a little bit about the sectionals. We had uh, two teams in Athena and Victor last year that did really well. Both of them have been supplanted as top seeds this year. Yep, we've got uh, a couple new teams at the top, and um, both of those programs are still very competitive. Athena's in the Class A tournament, and uh, Victor, of course, is uh, only one loss in the Double A tournament. Isn't Pittsburgh due? It seems like Pittsburgh has been on the doorstep for years. Keith Molinich and his staff have uh, really done a great job over there. They've been uh, in the semis or in the finals over the last four or five years for sure, and uh, they've run into some very stiff competition with the Aquinas run and yeah. the... Um, you know, the great teams from Marsh Henrietta. So they're they're due, and I'm sure they're primed to make a run this year. So they lose to Canisius out of the gate in Section 6, and then they steamroll Section 5. The last game against Churchville, it's a pretty good team. They only win by a touchdown. Does that give the rest of the class, you think, hope that, you know, Pittsburgh isn't just going to continue rolling? I think Churchville, first, let's give them some credit. Um, Troy Jeffers and his staff have brought that program from the, the you know, basically the dust to a very competitive situation. So, um, yeah, I think that you're right, Bill. I think that they've um, brought them back to the pack. So and it's anybody's tournament up there in the in the. You really tournament. believe that? I mean, that's the company line. Is it is it as tight as it looks sometimes? Well, your one through five seeds are all only with one loss. They're all six and one. And that includes McQuaid, who will be traveling to Schrader with a five, a six and one record. So, um, yeah, I think that uh, there's really probably four teams that are going to win. How back is Aquinas, and were they really the surprise they seen? 
Under new leadership, Derek Anacino has taken over for Chris Battaglia at Aquinas. Uh, they haven't missed a beat. And, um, you know, they had a down year last year where they did not make sectionals, but the new coach and his staff is, have really um, kept Aquinas back in the news. Now, Battaglia winds up as a member of your staff, the Varsity de Rondequoit. I think Danny Fichter deserves a lot of credit for the genius of hiring this guy and putting ego aside. Danny was the defensive coordinator uh, since we've got there. Um, we've been there for five years. Last year we had a little difficulty with our defensive group, but um, we had all sophomores in the lineup. Those guys are now juniors. Chris has taken them, has put them in a different scheme, and uh, the kids seem to be responding. Yeah, very strong position too, right? Heading we're, in. Yeah, we're uh, the number one seed, and uh, we've done a pretty good job at both on the offensive and the defensive. Nice to see you again, George. Good seeing you, Bill. <laughs> yeah. George Deer Down is sort of our football expert here with the Dunkin' Donuts High School Notebook. Coming up, we salute our Wegmans Make the Great nominee with Kim and later a boys soccer team full of nothing but champions when the Vision High School Sports Beat continues. Welcome back and thank you for watching the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson. It's time now for Making the Grade, brought to you by Wegmans. Wegmans is a proud supporter of Making the Grade, which highlights the accomplishment of Section 5 student athletes on and off the playing field. Making the Grade this week is Peyton Lill of Webster Schroeder. Peyton is a multi-sport athlete for the Warriors and trains year-round for both basketball and lacrosse. Last year as a junior, she found success in both sports and received multiple awards and recognitions for lacrosse. She's a four-year varsity starter and earned her third consecutive first-team all-county selection last spring. On top of that, she was a team MVP and was recognized as an all Greater Rochester lacrosse team selection as a junior. As a midfielder, she recorded 48 goals and 17 assists in Section 5 play last season. She's a three-time Brine All-American and aspires to play Division I lacrosse next year. Peyton also takes her talents and leadership to the court where she led her team in scoring in some important games in the 2016 season. For stepping up her role as a leader and role model for her teammates, this week Peyton Lill is making the grade. If you have a student in mind for our Making the Grade segment, we want your nominations. You can send them in to info at classywolf.com. Now here's Bill with the Section 5 calendar. Here is the Section 5 calendar for the week ahead. Field hockey sectionals begin on Monday in two classes. The girls volleyball sectionals start Thursday with the pre-quarter finals. The surviving eight in each class will play on Saturday. Already deep into the soccer tournaments, the boys sectional semifinals are Tuesday. And then on Friday, the A1 and A2 championship games will be played. On the girls' side, semifinals are Wednesday. Championship games across the three largest classes will be held on Saturday. Then we have football. Final four in Class A play Friday at 5 and 8 o'clock. On Saturday, it's the Double A games at SUNY Brockport at 4 and 7. That's the best of the Section 5 calendar for the week ahead. Here are the Vision High School Sports Beat Top 5 High School Football Plays of the Week brought to you in cooperation with Varsity Media. For the best local coverage in Section 5 sports, visit varsitymedia.net. At number 5 from the aforementioned McQuaid-Wilson football game, we have for Wilson, Deshaun Dash going right to left, passing to Ricky Gamble, 18 yards and a touchdown. McQuaid the 10-8 winner in that game. Number four, Grace Athena. Qualified to return to the sectionals, defend the championship with a win in this game over HFL. Patrick Meisenthal, the quarterback, going left to right to Johnny Sloan. Nice pass, Patrick. 30 yard touchdown pass, and Athena's a winner in that game, 35 to seven. Number three, Brockport Olympia for Brockport. Nick Brock really does it all there. He blocks the punt, picks it up, and scores. From 22 yards out, Brockport a winner over Greece Olympia. We got two plays better than that? Well, we think so. At number two, give this a little time to develop. For Rush Henrietta, this is Mecca McCullough. It's almost brought down and then just bursts in a, the clear. 94 yards with a kick return for a touchdown. A bright spot in a tough season for Rush Henrietta, a loser at Hilton. And at number one, Spencer Port running that double wing, walks in the pack, and Joey Carroll comes squirting out for the touchdown. 20 yards for Spencer Port, a 35-28 winner over Brighton. 
Coming up, Parker Hotchkiss leads the Cougars in a bid for a four-year championship sweep. When the Vision High School Sports Beat continues. Welcome back and thanks for joining us. This is the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Pucko. Time now for our honor roll of high school athletes. At number three, Tyler Sinal of Penfield won the Spartan Waterfront Cross Country Classic. Number two, in a battle of top girls volleyball team, Sutherland prevailed over HFL in a four set match. Taylor Pudetti had 47 assists. And a number one, Micah McDonald of the Webster Golf Team. Micah won the sectional title by four strokes over defending champion Lena Kaufman of Pittsburgh. Sectionals were held at the Penfield Country Club. HFL goes for its fourth straight Section 5 Boys Soccer Championship. Parker Hodgkiss leads the way for the Cougars who are unspoiled by success. There isn't a player out here who's experienced anything other than a championship season. Not any of the 12 underclassmen, especially not any of the nine seniors. Yeah, they've been a wonderful class to work with and a really talented group. We're going to miss them next year for sure. But uh, we've had six of the nine up since sophomore year. So uh, this is a chance for them to win their third title in a row. Parker Hotchkiss is the most visible of the Cougars. Hotchkiss has a team leading 15 goals in the team's 16 games. What's been the secret to your individual season? Uh, just being in the right place at the right time. Uh, the other guys helped me out and I just finished it off for them. HFL finished the regular season 14-2-0 with 10 straight victories. You spoiled a little bit by the success sometimes, you think? Uh, yeah, but we try and work hard, uh, forget about it, and uh, each game we just take it as a sectional championship game, keep the same mentality, and hope we can get the same results. Can you do that game in and game out, that kind of intensity? Yeah, we try and find that championship mentality. Sometimes, most, sometimes it comes together, and we try and replicate it every game. Senior keeper Nico Coria waited his turn and responded this year with a sparkling 1.056 goals against average. Well, I mean, last year it was, um, it was you know, a, a way for me to grow as a leader. I think this year it's, uh, it's you know, my turn to be the leader. Uh, and along with all the nine seniors we have on this team, we, we have a chance to, you know, make a, make a mark on our school and, you know, win four in a row. Do you, do you recognize the fact that, you know, there, there's not a player on this team that has known anything other than championship level play. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. It goes to our worth that work ethic every day, and we just work hard to get, make it that. HFL plays in Class A2. It's the smallest high school in the Monroe County League. The sectional championship goes to the likes of Pittsford Sutherland and Wayne. As a result, the Cougars get a little overlooked. Yeah, a little bit. Obviously, uh, there's some bigger schools in A1, and, and uh, being a smaller school, sometimes we get overlooked. But we kind of like being under the radar and uh, you know showing up when when it matters. So. What, what does that do for you, being under the radar? How does that help? Well, I think, obviously, when you're the top team in the area, you know, for example, Brighton and Brockport this year, you got a target on your back. Um, and I don't think we get that quite as much, although we have won three sectional championships in a row. So the target's on our back a little bit, too. But uh, I think the kids enjoy kind of being the underdog and, uh, you know, getting on top in the end, hopefully. HFL's secret weapon might be assistant coach Glenn Buckley an accomplished career soccer professional. Buckley also coaches some at Cornell, is a former New York State technical director, and played premier level club soccer in England back in the 70s. I did grow up around it. I played it from being five years of age and it was pretty much soccer all through the year except for a little break in the summer where we played cricket, you know. Uh, the American children and the culture is four or five sports. Uh, that are probably, four of them certainly, ahead of soccer or have been for many years. Buckley brings international expertise and a perspective on how American soccer can improve. And it starts by what not to do when players are just starting out. We definitely play too competitively, too young. Tournaments have never helped. Soccer's not invented for tournaments. You can't play three and four games in a weekend, but that's what we've been doing and still do took us a long time to get small-sided games for younger children, whereas the other nations have been doing it for many, many years.
Hot Chicks had a goal and an assist as the Cougars capped a 14-2 regular season with perhaps their best win of the year, a 3-2 win at Brockport. HFL is the top seed in the A2 sectional draw. We would like to thank our sponsors, especially the 11 dealerships of the Vision Automotive Group. They make the sports beat possible. As do you. Thanks once again for watching. We'll see you next week with the Vision High School Sports Beat.